Hello supply chain friends. So in this video, I will cover with you the top five jobs in supply chain, which are at the risk of getting eliminated due to AI. So watch this video till the end so that you can find out if you are doing one of those jobs and don't get me wrong. This is not one of those typical AI fear mongering videos I'm creating where people typically say that hell is about to break loose because of AI, but I will give you some very specific reasons as to why I think these jobs are at risk and what you should do differently about your career if you are doing one of those jobs. My name is Jameel Hai and I've been working in supply chain management positions across South Asia, Middle East and North America for more than 20 years. And my mission is to help you build real life skills for your job and career that they don't teach you in college. And if you're preparing for a supply chain job interview anytime soon, you should definitely book a session with me because I'm going to take your resume, the job description you're applying for, and based on a combination of those two and my 20 plus years of experience, will give you some laser guided tips and tricks which will maximize your chances of success. So go ahead now and book your session. So before we get into the details of the top five jobs which are at the risk of getting eliminated by AI, let's look at this graphic here which shows you the three attributes you need to do any supply chain jobs. And I think this applies widely beyond supply chain as well. The three things you need is basically information, knowledge, and wisdom. Now, there are some jobs which purely require just information and a little bit of knowledge, jobs like data entry and so on. Those jobs are at a much higher risk of getting eliminated by AI. However, those jobs which require more knowledge and wisdom are highly unlikely to be eliminated. But I just wanted to start with this structure and you may want to think about that if your job is purely information based. So let's say your job is to enter data or your job is to just pick up the phone and greet someone and give them some information. You are at a much higher risk of getting eliminated versus someone who is doing a much more complex job which requires a lot of problem solving, critical thinking and so on and so forth. So with that in mind, let's move to the first set of jobs which are at the risk of getting eliminated. Now at number five, the job which is at a very high risk is the warehouse operator job. So if you are working in a warehouse where your job is to pick, pack, or if your job is to move stuff around the warehouse, uh, run forklift operations, your job is definitely at risk. Why? Because although uh, the AI robotics which is being used in warehouses is still not fully affordable by a lot of companies, but that technology is evolving really fast. And companies who are able to afford this automation, they have already done that. For example, Amazon has already moved to a lot of automated movements within the warehouse. However, the smaller companies are still not there, but it's just a matter of time where these cost models will become viable enough and the cost of implementing this technology is gonna become affordable enough that most other companies will follow suit as well. And if you are the warehouse operator of today, that's a sign of a risk for yourself and you need to quickly upskill yourself. Now, when you think about upskilling yourself from your current warehouse operation role, so you today, for example, know how to operate a forklift, but, but tomorrow you need to know how to operate a robotic enabled warehouse. How do you operate those robots, right? So the number of operators in the warehouse, their jobs will go down because you know, you'll need less operators, but you will still, they will still need operators who know how to operate those advanced robotics. So try to upskill yourself in that way. Remember something very interesting that my guest, uh, Alien Sandoval said on the podcast when she came on, which is AI is not gonna take your job, somebody knowing AI will. So if you are a warehouse operator today, it's almost imperative upon you to start upskilling yourself in terms of how you can learn skills in that AI space, which will make your career future-proof. And the reason why companies are adapting this technology very quickly is simple because storaging and handling is a huge component of the logistics cost today. So once they apply these robotic automations in the warehouse, the amount of money spent on touching the boxes, moving the boxes, storage and handling is going to go down significantly. So there is a clear win on the P&L side of things for supply chain directors and managers to do. And therefore, the, f the quicker you upskill, the better it is. The next job which is at risk of getting eliminated in supply chain is inventory clerk or data entry specialist. These are the kind of jobs where you are typically doing manual input of inventory levels, order details or supplier data where you are basically punching numbers in different spreadsheets or in different tools. 
now with the advancements in ai these new tools with the data capture and internet of things they are getting much smarter at capturing this data and therefore these jobs are definitely at risk and the potential impact of automating these jobs is to reduce entry level roles which is you know instead of spending money and salaries on a lot of data entry operators you can just have ai do it for you which is at a, at a fraction of the cost so there's a clear win uh, for the companies in this so if you are a data entry operator today where you are just doing this kind of data entry work which remember is fitting squarely in that information processing bucket right so this jobs attribute is purely processing information and updating information so highly likely low hanging fruit for ai to replace and if you are doing one of those jobs you should quickly start getting into more complex roles within the data processing so maybe upskill yourself invest in yourself in order to become a, a more advanced data analyst somebody who can be a better problem solver somebody who can uh, make meaning out of numbers so you may want to look at that direction in your career and try to get out of these data entry roles as soon as possible the next family of jobs which is at risk is customer service jobs now customer service jobs clearly we can already see that if you call any utility company today or any service provider for that matter uh, more likely than ever before the first interaction you will have is not going to be with a human being it is going to be with somebody with, who has an ai agent who is going to listen to your standard answers and try to ans answer those questions um in in a very standardized way and you will only go to a human being if required so that is exactly happening in the supply chain space as well so a lot of these customer service jobs uh, in supply chain are quickly getting eliminated they are not going to completely vanish because at the end of the day remember if ai bots are unable to solve your query after asking 5 6 7 10 questions uh, they will eventually move you to a human being operator but imagine if there were like 30 people in a company's customer service organization uh, tomorrow they will only need maybe 5 right so it'll be a smaller fraction so these jobs are definitely not going to be fully eliminated but they will significantly reduce and of course the win for the company or the impact is very clear that instead of investing in 30 uh, customer service operators now they can only invest in 5 and ai bots uh, for this kind are at a fraction of the cost So if you are a customer service agent then definitely you may want to start thinking about what's next for you and depending on your interest you may want to explore more complex jobs in the supply chain hierarchy than just picking up the phone and answering questions. The next job which is at risk is transportation coordinator or dispatcher. Now what are these jobs these are jobs where you are basically doing standard scheduling of shipments or warehouse or uh transportation so you are basically organizing uh delivery appointments and pickups and drop offs and all those kind of things now this is already an industry which is significantly getting transformed by ai because ai algorithms are much better at route optimization so they reduce the cost by 5 to 20% it's already a proven fact so if you are one of those coordinators who is just managing those appointments the number of those the days of those jobs are definitely numbered so you may want to start thinking about how do you upskill yourself to some of those more adaptive jobs in supply chain so can you become someone who can manage those optimized ai tools which are doing most of the route optimization and appointments itself but you are providing that overarching uh, human intelligence element to the ai output Uh, and how do you get there right so try to learn more of the ai enabled modules in transportation management systems uh, for instance if uh, mercury gate or manhattan are launching some new modules which are ai enabled try to upskill yourself on them sooner than later uh, before it's too late and then finally this might be a bit of a surprise for some of you one more job which is at a high risk of elimination is entry level demand planner or junior forecaster job why because in this job when you are a very junior demand planner where you are not really running the snop process you are not driving consensus your job is just to do time series forecast modeling uh, those jobs are definitely going to go away pretty soon because uh, if you are doing basic demand prediction using historical data and models 
uh, LLMs are getting really smart at that. They are already uh, much better at uh, processing data. So these large language models uh, can work much better with unclean data. Uh, just listen to what uh, Aileen said on the podcast about this whole unclean and unstructured data. What's changed is AI, right? So that is what has changed in the last couple of years, the actual ability to get those big data sets and use the data without having to standardize the data. So in the past five, six years ago, when we tried to build those tools, we would have to standardize all the data into the same format, put it into a data lake, and then put the analysis on top of the data lake, or the analysis wouldn't work because the reports wouldn't print, the, uh, the visualizations weren't accurate enough, people would question the data. So there was this constant effort to clean the data and get it standard and get it in and then look at it. And that just, is not responsive enough for business, right? So that's why it wasn't as effective in the past or was extremely expensive to do in the past. But the new AI tools allow us to process bigger data sets without standardizing them, right? So the advancements we've seen in data analytics say, I can take six or seven or eight or 10 or 12 or 15 diverse data sets and use large language models against those data sets without putting them all in the same place or standardizing the data so that everything means the same. I mean, so clearly it's proving to automate about 75% of these repetitive tasks. And therefore, if you are a junior demand planner or, and your job is just purely forecasting and cleaning up these models, try to upskill yourself and get promoted to a more senior demand planning role uh, or a supply planning role because those jobs are going to be less likely impacted by AI. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I've also made videos on topics like which five jobs will help you make $100,000 or more in supply chain and what is the career path that will lead you from zero to a six-figure salary in supply chain. Keep watching.